After five years, 60% of dental hygienists want to leave the profession entirely. That's a problem. My name is Tracy Baker, and I've been a dental hygienist for three decades. I'm gonna to speak to you today about dental hygienist burnout. When I was asked to speak on this topic, the first thing I did was go straight to the source. I spoke to hygienists that were identifying as feeling burnt out. We had a Facebook group, a Zoom call, a conference call, some email submissions, and I spoke to some hygienists one-on-one. -on -one. Overall, I spoke to 80 hygienists from all across the country, East Coast to West Coast, the Southern States, and the Northern ones too, even some in Canada. You know, we hygienists, we like to do our research, right? There were some universal topics, and I'm gonna start with the big one, money. It wasn't how much money that they were getting paid or not getting paid. What really tended to start that burnout feeling was the fact that after a certain number of years, they max out on their income. We're just not gonna make any more money than that. Some hygienists, although they had been with a practice for seven years, 10 years, 12 years, they felt that they had contributed to the practice. When they asked for a raise, they were told, hygienists don't make that much. This is how much hygienists make. And that was gonna be the end of it. Other times they were told that they would get a raise via a bonus system, which never ever seemed to pan out. Bonuses tended to be attached to the rest of the team. And so it wasn't that if their, their performance improved, they got more money. It was a team effort. And very often they didn't see any of that bonus. I always thought when this started that the physical aspect would be a contributing factor because as you know, hygiene is pretty hard on your body. But over and over, hygienists all said that no, that wasn't really what was causing the burnout. It was definitely a feeling of I've gone as far as I can go. The other thing that really came up a lot was hostility about how much money they do make. So although they're capped out and hit a ceiling, there still seems to be some resentment from not only the team, but from the dentists themselves about how much they're paying the hygienists. And um, it was really disheartening to know that I have met my ceiling and still people don't like me for it. Sometimes the, they, were, they would ask for help, um, support from the team, and they would kind of get pushback and the whole feeling was, you make that much money, you can do it yourself. And it wasn't that a hygienist was asking for help for herself, it was for the benefit of the patient. So that tended to really get, um, get their spirits down. There's a real feeling of not necessarily being a part of the team, even if you're a team player. I know one hygienist said that the dentist had had a massage therapist come in for the entire team but not the hygienists. So everybody got a nice massage and the hygienists continued to work on patients. Another topic that came up was benefits or lack thereof. Many hygienists had worked for over 10 years for an employer and had never ever been offered a health plan or health insurance for their family. Those that did get health insurance, they tended to get policies that weren't that great not any, not one person that I spoke to was satisfied with the benefits that they were offered and that they all needed to supplement them with policies that they paid on their own. Another one is lack of good leadership. That really came up. Hygienists tend to burn out when there isn't any good leadership for them in the practice. I did ask, well, did you try going to another practice? But they had tried that. They said that usually they ended up with a very similar situation. When I asked, what do you think would help with that? Many of them said, we'd like to have our own practices or at least the opportunity to own a practice. I thought that was quite interesting. Overall, I would have to say that the hygienists that experience burnout, they don't want to be burnt out 
they really do want to have the passion ignited for them. But they feel that the way that hygiene is set up in this country and across the system, it's just never gonna happen. And they're more resigned, not so much burnt out. What I can see is that dental hygiene burnout is not an individual problem. It looks to me like this is a systemic problem. The question remains, what can we do about this? We can't keep continuing burning out hygienists after five years. They are either going to leave the profession or they're gonna work and be miserable. That affects patient care. It affects the whole practice. This, this is something that we really do have to address. And so the only way that it's gonna change is if we come together and make it change. My name is Tracy Baker, and I am way too close to the camera. Ouch. Okay.